Good morning and welcome to Mount Vernon Place United Methodist Church in Baltimore, Maryland on April 16th, 2023. Today we receive a message from Jeffrey Hart entitled, It's Gonna Be Okay, Even If It Isn't. The message is based upon our scripture readings today, Acts chapter 2, verses 22 to 32, and the first letter from Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Coming off a mountaintop moment like Easter morning is difficult, even in the best of times. It is even more difficult to return to our everyday grind where things are not as you would want them to be. We felt wonderful basking in the Lord's rising, only to realize that our daily bread has not risen in the same manner. Today we explore how to live into the Apostle Peter's instruction to rejoice in this hope, even if it is necessary to be distressed for a short time. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 22 through 32. Fellow Israelites, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man whose credentials God proved to you through miracles, wonders, and signs, which God performed through him among you. You yourself know this. In accordance with God's established plan and foreknowledge, he was betrayed. You, with the help of the wicked men, had Jesus killed by nailing him to a cross. God raised him up. God freed him from death's dreadful grip, since it was impossible for death to hang on to him. David says about him, I foresaw that the Lord was always with me, because he is at my right hand. I won't be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my body will live in hope, because you won't abandon me to the grave, nor permit your Holy One to experience decay. You have shown me the paths of life. Your presence will fill me with happiness. Brothers and sisters, I can speak confidently about the patriarch David. He died and he was buried, and his tomb is with us to this very day. Because he was a prophet, he knew that God promised him with a solemn pledge to seat one of his descendants on his throne. Having seen this beforehand, David spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he wasn't abandoned to the grave, nor did his body experience decay. This Jesus God raised up. We are all witnesses to that fact. Our scripture reading continues in the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9, entitled, Thanksgiving. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed. On account of his vast mercy, he has given us new birth. You have been born anew into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You have a pure and enduring inheritance that cannot perish, an inheritance that is presently kept safe in heaven for you. Through his faithfulness, you are guarded by God's power so that you can receive the salvation he is ready to reveal in the last time. You now rejoice in this hope, even if it's necessary for you to be distressed for a short time by various trials. This is necessary so that your faith may be found genuine. Your faith is more valuable than gold, which will be destroyed even though it itself tested by fire. Your genuine faith will result in praise, glory, and honor for you when Jesus is revealed. Although you've never seen him, you love him. Even though you don't see him now, you trust him, and so rejoice with a glorious joy that is too much for words. You are receiving the goal of your faith, your salvation. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Well, good morning. It is an absolute honor and joy to be filling in for Pastor Rod this morning while he and Carol are visiting Scotland. I'm specifically grateful for the opportunity to share how God has really been leading my heart during this Easter season, a season that is so full of hope and joy, for we know the love that a risen Christ brought into the world, not only 2,000 years ago, but the love that our risen Christ brings into the world today. With all the joy we experienced on the mountaintop of Easter last week, I, I feel there's a need to open the proverbial space in this virtual room. Uh, we opened our services today by singing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, where even the fields and the forests, the vales and the mountain, the flowery meadows, the flashing seas, the chanting birds, and the flowing fountains called us to rejoice. Our hymn of preparation also called us upon to lift God's name on high, to sing his praises, and twice in every verse we declared that we are so glad. Yet I want to give our collective hearts and our minds the space we need to breathe, to fully feel whatever we may be feeling today. Therefore, I would like to take an extra moment to just listen to a song that continually came through my heart as I was preparing for this message. It's Truth Be Told by Matthew West and Carly Pierce. I use it this morning as our prayer of illumination, our prayer that this place and that this morning we may tell the truth so that the whole world may hear it. So I ask you to quiet your heart, still your soul, and listen for his almighty voice as he speaks with each and every one of us, even on this day. Lord, be with us this morning. Bless the words that, we, that have been read. Bless the meditations of our soul. Bless our ears for the hearing. Fill our hearts with whatever you would have them filled with. Amen. As I said at the beginning, it is a joy to be here with each of you this morning. Even those of you who may be hearing me through our recording months from now or years from now or whenever you may be hearing it. It's a joy to be with you at this very moment. But I must confess that I'm finding it extremely difficult to come off the mountaintop that I was experiencing last week. Last Sunday, we celebrated Easter morning and I was high. I had a great Holy Week. The world was a better place because I knew the Lord is risen and that he had risen indeed. Yet on Monday, I realized that Easter Monday is just like the Monday before and the Monday before that and even the Monday before that. And so very quickly, I no longer felt the joy of being with God. I woke up again and I felt the need to find strength just to get out of bed, just to get into the shower and start my day. I, I certainly didn't have the confidence of the early church that we read about within the lectionary selection this morning in Acts. You know, you recall, we recall, I foresaw that the Lord was already with me because he is at my right hand and I won't be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my body will live in hope because you won't abandon me in the grave, nor permit your Holy One to experience decay. You have shown me the paths of life. Your presence will find me with happiness. I felt none of those feelings on this past Monday morning. What many of you may not know, because I almost never truly admit it or talk about it. And in fact, I don't even admit it to myself. I, I suffer from a mild form of depression. Mine is certainly not a severe case, but I'm still baffled by it. And even though I deny it, it 
this that feeling is a very real part of my existence. I will uh, frequently experience afternoons where I am just sad for absolutely no reason at all. I find it difficult to get myself moving and would prefer to just hide in my bed, sheets pulled tightly over my head, avoiding the world altogether. I don't always feel joyful and I don't always feel happy, even though I have absolutely, absolutely no reason not to feel joyful and happy. And in fact, at this moment, I'm recalling a time last summer when Laura found me sitting out on our patio on a beautiful day. I was surrounded by gorgeous flowers that were in bloom. Everything in my life was a blessing. Still, Laura found me crying. She was obviously concerned and asked what was wrong, but my only response was nothing. I'm fine. I was sad, but I was fine. Perhaps some of you have felt this way in the past. Perhaps some of you, even during this most joyful and glorious time of Easter, are feeling this way right now. But even as I step away from the voices of my own head, the world isn't making it very easy for me to be joyful and celebrate hope and love that is contained within the Easter story. I am genuinely worried about the war in Ukraine. The state of our economy always seems to be teetering on the edge of some doom and gloom. And it appears that our society just is unable to understand that assault rifles aren't necessary for anything but hunting people. Child abuse scandals appear to be getting worse every day. In fact, I walked through the front pages of the the paper this morning, and I saw plenty of reasons for sadness and grief. And I know there are some pains and sorrows that just simply linger forever within our lives. As Laura and I were planning our wedding this past fall and last summer, there were times that it was really hard for us to find joy because Laura really struggled knowing that her mother and father weren't gonna be there in person to celebrate our union. Having passed 13 and seven years ago, there would be no father-daughter dance, they couldn't give a toast. We needed to find a way to be content with something different than the day we envisioned. Finally, I would also be remiss if I didn't name the struggle I think we all are feeling this Easter season. We have to acknowledge the pain and sadness we feel as we contemplate the future of our congregation. The elephant's in the room, we might as well acknowledge it. It's hard for us to see deep joy in the midst of the uncertainty before our congregation here at Mount Vernon Place United Methodist Church. Our grief is real, our grief is sincere, our sorrow is deep within each and every one of our souls, and I feel it with you. But are you ready for some really good news? I am, I need some good news. And the good news I found in our scripture lesson today, and I find in the gospel message in general, is that our lament is heard. We have not been left alone. We have not been abandoned. We live with a risen Lord. He's with us, even on this day. He's with us, and he shares our sorrows he knows our pains. He's here with us today to lift us up and help us through all of these pitfalls. But please notice, I said that he's here to help us through all of the pitfalls. He's not here to necessarily get us around all the challenges of life. He's not here to remove them and toss them aside, all of those sources of grief. He's not going to eliminate them. And he's not here to make everything better, especially better as we would like them to be. 
our Lord is here to help us through our grief. And he's here with us so we may fully experience these real human emotions and experiences. He knows our grief. He feels our sadness. He understands our pain. And he even shares our anger. All of these emotions, they are not to be tossed aside or, and ignored. Instead, these feelings are to be fully embraced and felt. I hope we can truly acknowledge these feelings with one another and realize that they too are what it means to be holy during a joyous season such as Easter. The Apostle Peter in his first letter that we read this morning said it this way, you now rejoice in this hope, even if it's necessary for you to be distressed for a short time by various trials. I, I take this line as saying God is test. I do not take this line into saying that God is testing us. Instead, these are moments that it means to be human. To be human means we have trials. To be humans means we will find it difficult to be joyful in every circumstance and at every time, even if that time happens to be the Easter season. So what are we to do? We are to stay in love with the Lord, even if we don't feel it at the moment. It means we are to embrace the wisdom that says it's going to be okay even when we know it's not going to be the same. We live into the belief that it's going to be okay, even when we don't know how it's going to be okay. We truly believe, and this is important, we must truly believe that the resurrection and the joy that comes from that resurrection at Easter is not just for Jesus who died on that cross, but for all of us, all of us even today. This does not mean I claim to understand what this resurrection will be like. In fact, the exact opposite. I claim to know nothing about what it's like on the other side of this particular moment. And I also do not believe that our resurrection on the other side will be anything like what we may wish it to be. I do, however, have faith in God that is needed to believe that the resurrection will be what I need it to be, what he needs it to be. I agree with Peter in his first letter that said it starting in verse 7 through 9. This is necessary so that your faith may be found genuine. Your faith is more valuable than gold, which will be destroyed even though it itself tested by fire. Your genuine faith will result in praise, glory, and honor for you with Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you've never seen him, you love him. Even though you don't see him now, you trust him. So rejoice with that glorious joy that is too much for words. You are receiving the goal of your faith, your salvation. To this I proclaim amen, even in my own doubt, even in my worry, and even in my pain, I proclaim amen. For that glorious joy that he spoke for in verse 8 may not be something I understand. And that is why it is too much for words. I will also say with, for all of us, even for myself to hear, that when we stay together, when we stay with one another, we will find our way to resurrect one another as individuals and as a congregation. You remember when I was talking about Laura finding me on the patio crying? She never judged my feelings. In fact, all she did was sit with me and even cried a little bit because I was crying. We did find family and community to fill in the gaps that we were feeling to speak at our wedding. Communities, when they come together, are able to solve really big problems. 
even the ones found on the front paper of our newspapers this morning. Perhaps they won't be solved as we would like them to be solved today, but they will be solved with time and with faith in one another. I also want to bring up our, the letter we received from our lay leaders this week because they provided this assurance in this way. This is a time of uncertainty, but also appropriate to the season, a time of great potential and rebirth for our church. Our future may look different, yet we are confident we will be stronger in our faith, our relationships, and our commitments as we move through this journey together. To this, I will also proclaim amen and my eternal gratitude that I am in a community with each and every one of you, even within my own doubts, within my own worries, and within my own pain. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If the people of Mount Vernon Place United Methodist Church may be of service to you, please email us at mvpumcbaltimore at gmail.com. But for now, may the Lord bless you and keep you until we can meet again. God be with you.